All right, it's 2020. Find a new game you're into. For whatever reason, watching YouTube highlights of it just never gets boring. And during this time, there's a global pandemic. So anyone who did play games, this was great because I already wasn't planning on going outside. So not only can I stay inside and play games, but I get rewarded for my actions, which is just kind of unheard of. But there was also a dramatic increase of gamers across the board and just increase in popularity for player numbers for most video games. And I imagine that one of the ones that's most closest to my audience's heart is Brawlhalla because everyone had to be indoors. Brawlhalla is free. It's pretty easy to access so it had its second highest peak of all time in august 2020 this is also when pavel oh, pavelski malev stop i'm just joking don't click off Guys, began his streaming career and what's very unique about pavelski is at the same time he started doing streaming and youtube his competitive career would really start to take off and ramp up in success and placement which is very rare because the balance of streaming and content creation has a super short shelf life this is probably because fighting game players are very particular about their practice regimen jump two down back two jump two back four three and jump two down back two jump two back four three and jump two down back two jump two back three four back forward one did you get that? And they also don't want to give away too much about what they do or their picks leading into tournaments. Now for Brawlhalla, it's pretty well known who you're gonna play leading into each tournament, but sometimes people like to keep that to themselves and also practicing in front of other people can probably like hurt the amount of focus you put into practice. So seeing as how someone's placements were only getting better with the more he streamed hadn't really happened before. However, Pavelski had been playing competitive for a pretty long time. He started in, I believe it is 2018. You can see his first notable eighth and the tournament was with 2v2s and his teammate Vortex. Uh, they got 8th in Autumns and almost all the highlights just is Pavelski on Wushong. Where is Vortex now, seeing as how he doesn't team with him in the future? Well, he's banned for 4 years because he may or may not have told someone to jump off Brawlhaven, but only using 3 letters. It starts with K and ends with S, you know what I'm talking about? So, after this ban, give it 4 months, Pavelski and the Ninja729 would form a team together and a friendship that would really motivate the two of them to both get better at Brawlhalla. In fact, Pavelski insisted I shared this fun fact about his improvement. You and he's pretty good. That that made you a much Wait, better. Wait, I'll tell you something very important. Okay, you better include this in the video. The person, <laughs> the first time I got diamond, was me playing versus Ninja. That's how I got diamond. I beat him to get diamond, and I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that it was him. I realized that I have a screenshot in Brawlhalla. <laughs> it was of me beating him, and then I checked that screenshot like yeah, two years you, after. You talked about this in your interview with Brawlhalla. What is this? Why do these people have ears? What is going on? Where are we? Pavelski? What are you doing? Oh, there was a land in Europe? Does, does anyone remember this? Am I having an American moment? When did this happen? Oh, I see. Wait, when did Pavelski beat Blue? All right, I did some research. Turns out Pavelski was doing a lot of side quests before he became a streamer and went to a land and just absolutely destroyed everyone. This has got to be like seeing XQC on stage for Overwatch thinking he was only a streamer. Okay, as a short summary, Pavelski qualified for the Great Brawl, which is an in-person land in Europe. He then goes to the land in Europe, destroys everyone, takes first place. First place winner also gets sent to BCX 2019 on a free plane ride. Pavelski is the great brawl champion. He will be earning the flight and hotel as well as a big chunk of that 20,000 euros. Trying to get those strings started. Another sideline. Here we go. Look That's at that. what we like to see from Pavelski as he tries to end it in convincing fact. You no, know, honestly, if that happened to me, I'd just get up and walk away. I'm done. I've had enough. Winning the great brawl was great, and it gave him a lot of money, and it had a lot of bonuses towards probably a better computer, which he'd eventually end up streaming on, and had all sorts of bonuses. However, it was never Pavelski's intention to become a top competitor. He played Brawlhalla for fun. You know, I always made clips even before I streamed, I was like, Yeah, it's all on your Twitter. You're a big clip hunter. <laughs> yeah, and I, um, I was like, okay, I make these clips, but no one can see them. And I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting pissed off. And then uh, I was like, you know what? I should, I think I should start streaming. A few of my friends told me I should start streaming. Maybe it's a good idea. Oh my God, what the heck happened to him? He just died. Yo, stream again? Exactly. Stream again, stream every day, daily, 30 times. Despite being rank 1 on the leaderboard, consistently making it onto the mainstream, and additionally being in almost all of Brawlhalla highlights, Pavelski's true skill was his hours. He could stream for hours on end, 4 to 6 hours a day, unless it was a tournament day, which was also being streamed. And what's funny is that if your main issue is with Brawlhalla is to practice the game, and then you start streaming daily, you're still somewhat practicing the game, so you're gonna play more. Especially when the viewers start to rack up, as well as the subscribers, the motivation to play grows even larger. 
and this continued to snowball outside of streaming. Casters were starting to know about his streams. It was infecting Twitter timelines when he'd go live. His YouTube had daily uploads, as well as an editor and a thumbnail editor. And that's just wild to me because you don't know that this is going to work out. It was a lot of budget loss in the beginning. That is a scary thing to look at that was probably only funded by his competitive success. And you'd think because he's putting so much time into streaming and YouTube and creating content, he'd get worse at the game. But no, he just got better. He just kept he, he kept getting better at the game. I don't know how. I don't know how. And everything was looking really good until Ju. And for those of you who know the future, you may be like, what? What do you mean? Ju was great because he didn't. Well, you're gonna spoil what happens. The Mammoth Cup is the first tournament this really crazy character called Jae Yoon is allowed in. And if you really wanted to win this Mammoth Cup, pretty much the only way was gonna be using Jae Yoon. Seeing as how Akno and Simple seemingly are always in the top three of every single meta, it's no doubt that they'd figure out Jae Yoon is the next best character pretty fast, and that's why you see them in the Grand Finals. It's also the same Grand Finals in North America, and it's the same Grand Finals in South America. I mean, this character was across the globe the best in the game. And we only had a little bit of time before the BCX Champion started and that little bit of time was all Pavelski needed to pick up Jae Yoon. Uh, for Jae Yoon, I don't know about Jae to be honest. I just played Grace for a bit and then I was winning every match. I, I it was impossible to lose. So I was like, you know what? Uh, Look at this this shit. Shit. You know, not knowing what was going to really become of Jae Yoon and just how far he would go, it would be okay to assume that Pavelski would use guitars for all of BCX. One thing that's incredibly important to note, if there was ever going to be a brain gifted enough to pick up a character and a weapon that fast, it would be Pavelski. Looking at the sheer amount of games he played that season and the wildly successful competitive career he already had, he had all the tools required to pick up Jae Yoon before BCX. Oh. That looked like that looked like a slick edge guard to end it. Oh, does he not have recovery? Oh, he makes Whoa. back. Oh my gosh. This could be it. This is so. Get to the ground pound. Oh, that would have finished it. Oh, but no, no, going no on way. Way. This could be it. It's, it's over. It's all on the line. Heisen still trailing in damage by just a uh -oh. little bit. Pavelski oh. on the chase oh. down to get it. That's oh, it. Line. And now Pavelski is hitting back. Silent Fisher dive kick gets the recovery. <gasps> Ball on the ground, punishing your openings again. Those stop Sarah's. Akno though gets Sarah's. Is that it? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Simple now dead even, but the GC sideline seems to be a whoa! favorite of Pavelski, and he gets the Oh, no. Simple with the offstage. He's great. Pavelski, what was that? He's insane. Why? Why? He's insane. Why? Right back from that. Keep the mental Turned strong, on. but oh, the belt no. Oh, the side finish. Wake oh, Delay Recovery, Pavelski. that's going to do it. Delay Recovery is going to be Pavelski yeah. holding on to these same leads. Game after game might even make it bigger oh, here. Gets the recovery from Pavelski. From one more recovery, and Pavelski the Nair! And Pavelski is going to be the European Brawlhalla World Champion! It, it, it has been done. It has been done. Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Oh my god! I actually won! <laughs> And see, you you think it'd be done there, but it's not. It do, it actually gets better from this point. Pavelski decides to dive even deeper into YouTube and streaming, dedicating more time to it, leading to the views going up. Leading up to BCX, all the YouTube videos he made are considerably underperforming compared to the videos he makes now. They're nowhere near in views. So he's like, dang, I can't stop playing this game. I need to keep making YouTube videos. And plus I enjoy making YouTube videos. So he continues to play Brawl and do competitive on the side. And for whatever reason, this just makes him the absolute best he's ever been. Yeah, yeah, I lost motivation after those two tournaments uh, that I won back to back. The two tournaments that I won, so Parsec and Spring. After that, uh, I started slowly started losing motivation. One month after that or something. Don't That's remember exactly when. Yeah. And then you got third in the next World Championship. Oh my God! Wait, you're actually like a beast for a while. You made more money. After the next tournament, I got third place the next tournament, and then I started dipping slowly because honestly, after the second tournament win. I was like, you know what, this was fun, but like, I don't know, it was not like the first one.
So, like you may have heard me say when I was in call with him, he continued to be extremely good at Brawlhalla despite no longer taking the competitive side as serious, and he was still getting third after third after third after third in the year of 2021, making more in the year of 2021 than he did in the year that he won the world championship. However, I wouldn't say Pavelski was done competing, because if you've ever tried competing for the attention of others, first you might have a self-esteem issue, but second, it's not that easy. You know, streaming on Twitch isn't just a guaranteed success, even if you're in a tiny market like Brahalla. But if you could conjure up the most ideal Brahalla streamer, someone who's constantly hitting clips. What am I playing with the best gauntlet player global though? Go next game. Is an expressive personality on a face cam. Bro, Coco sounds like a name for your parrot. Come here, Coco. Come here. My, I had a parrot named Coco. He died. But like, I had a parrot named Coco. Like, and still competing at the top level, you'd get Pavelski. And let me reiterate again, the sheer amount of hours he puts into streaming is wild. It is essential to his success, and he still continues to make YouTube videos daily. Now, as for the amount of times you can make YouTube videos on Brawlhalla, that's probably finite to a degree. And he's streamed other games and had a wild amount of success with multiverses when it came out and I'm sure he'll have a wild amount of success with Project L or any other fighting title that he's interested in when it comes out. And as a final question to Pavelski, I went ahead and asked him if he had any advice for any other content creators, or streamers, or YouTubers, or whatever you want to be, you know, I thought I'd go ahead and ask him and see what he had to say as someone who I would argue is successful and has quote unquote made it. But if they want to like be a bit more on the dedication side, want to like try more to be successful with YouTube, that it definitely takes a while, especially when you have low subscribers. It's gonna take a long while. I think getting started is the hardest part. Getting your first 5k subscribers is gonna help a lot. You can just like have that as a side thing and uh, go do your school or whatever your main thing is and see how that goes like you know that's how i did it with europe and it ended up being very successful tip. just have a, have youtube as a side thing if you enjoy doing it because if you don't don't stress yourself you're not gonna do anything if you don't enjoy doing youtube just like with anything else in life so yeah, that's my tip. And I'm finally done recording and editing this video at 1.23 p.m. December 15th. So if you have any other questions about Pavelski and how he rose up as a competitive player, transitioned to content creator, and still has some success in the competitive arena of Brawlhalla, feel free to message me on my Discord, V-O-N-D-A-K-A-Y, hashtag 4004, and I will respond to you there. Um, if you have any other questions, post them in the comment section below for other people to maybe see it in case they also had the same question. And thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate it and enjoy your day.